Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the Adams Brothers Podcast. We are here this evening with the very, very talented and beautiful Miss Tawanda Hanks. She is a realtor uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia right now, uh, originally from uh, Palm Beach County, Florida. And um, I know that's my friend T. I call her T. And uh, she's a rock star realtor up in uh, up in Atlanta and all over the country here. And she'll sell you a house anywhere in this country. Uh, so I'd like to welcome our guest, Tawanda Hanks, to the Adam Brothers Podcast Show. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So let's jump right on into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Tawanda. I, I told them that you're from Palm Beach County uh, originally. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started with our questions. So yeah, I am. My name is Tawanda Hanks. I am originally from Palm Beach County, born and raised. I'm from um, Wayne Beach, Florida, but I was um, adopted younger. So I grew up in Pahokee, Florida. So um, Palm Beach County is actually my stumping ground. Um, dual licensed realtor, moved to Atlanta maybe about six years ago just to um, start, get my kids a different life, um, allow them the opportunity to see th other things, other people, um, different cultures, and so on and so forth. So just up and left and moved to Atlanta, like in the middle of one night. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you uh when you moved, I know you had your little day party down in uh Hallidale, <laughs> and then you just disappeared. I didn't see you anymore. I was like, Well, what happened to Tawanda? You know, next thing I know, you're living in Atlanta. Yeah, up yeah. and left. <laughs> but I did enjoy myself that day. I really did. I had a good time, and uh, we got to do another one of those day parties here real soon, you know? Yeah, that was definitely very interesting. Um, yes, that was. was the one where we had the headphones, where yeah. everybody had their own headphones. I think I sent you the video on that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You yeah. Was that the all white? Yes. Okay, I remember that one. Yeah. I remember Yeah, that was my part. Going. All right. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, T, um, so just, uh, you told us a little bit about you. Um, so how did you get started in real estate? Um, the way I got started in real estate actually is actually uh, very funny and interesting. Um, when I moved to Atlanta, me and my kids um, ran into a slumlord. So I pretty much moved to moving this house. It was like a four bedroom, two bathroom house. Uh, we were super excited to move into the house. And the guy, he um, he had promised to do some things in the house that I felt needed to be done. But at the same time, me and my kids were like, you know, looking for someone to move it. So I ended up going inside the house before he actually did the work. And it was just like a verbal, like we verbally spoke about it. So when he didn't do the work, I stopped pretty much like paying him or whatever. And then he was like trying to take me to court um, on it. So I did the application, did all the paperwork to actually go to court about it to fight against like, hey, I have the money. This is why I'm not doing it um, and so on and so forth. And um, turned out there was a clause within the lease um, that protected the landlord. You know, some states are protect the landlord more than they do the tenant. And in this case, it was like that. But because I had all my paperwork and stuff like that, the judge still, the judge was able to see that, oh yeah, he just pretty much getting over on this girl where he allowed it to um, pretty much like just break even and stuff like that. So because of that encounter with the guy and it was that one clause in the, in the, in the lease that uh, actually helped him that was more favorable on his side, it just a lot. It, it just woke me up to um, see that as a as a culture, as a people, we sign a lot of things without having a full understanding of what we're signing. And it's yeah. always fine print that works against us. So right. that's how I got into real estate, because I'm like, listen, they ain't going to be doing my people like that, oh, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So that's actually how I got into real estate. And, and you know, we need more people like you. That's right. In real estate that, you know, went, you know, that, you know had their own personal experience with a slumlord and by accident really i mean because i don't think you know you know as our conversation that, that we had that you wanted to get into real estate but like you just stated you know because of that you know you wanted to make sure that what happened to you didn't happen to anybody else so you just kind of like fell into real estate you know literally like 
I wouldn't even say fell into it. I was just like, um, actually, it taught me my, it, it helped me learn my purpose. Like I love teaching or whatever. So real estate is more so for ministry for me. Um, so it actually, I fell into my purpose, was able to literally walk into my purpose because I used to work front desk at the doctor's office. <laughs> Right, right before I got into real estate I thought about going into real estate one time myself just uh doing it on the side here some years ago and it still might be something that I might think about in the future but it was just something that just came to my mind I, I was just saying to myself I think I'll make a great salesperson uh if I was to ever involve myself in it so it was just something I just thought about myself too over and I think you'll do great at it. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is you don't have to be a realtor to make money in real estate. There's so many different avenues that you can, you know, venture down. You can, you have wholesaling, you have sales, you have uh, short sales, foreclosures. Like there's so many different niches. And when it comes to real estate that you actually don't have to be licensed in order to make money in real estate, you can become an investor. You can become an a loan officer, there's, you can become a transaction coordinator. So anybody like, I don't discourage anybody that wants to get into real estate from getting into it. But I can tell you, like a lot of people feel like it's easy money and it's not, you literally have to put in the work in order to reap the benefits. You know what I'm right. saying? I encourage everybody, if that's your vision, if God gave you the vision, he'll send you the client. So I say, go for it. So you told us a little bit about you and you told us you know how you got into real estate mm -hmm. and uh tell us the viewers out there that's watching right now what are the requirements to buy a home if you or to be a realtor or what are the requirements to be a realtor actually that's that's definitely uh one question so, okay so um the requirements to become a realtor Pretty much is training. Like, I think you have to do like 75 hours um, of training before you can take the test. I know that's how it here it is here in Georgia. I think Florida is a little less um, and so on and so forth. I'm a dual licensed realtor. I actually got licensed in Georgia before I got licensed in Florida. Um, so when I can't, when I got licensed in Florida, I just had to take the Florida portion, but you just go through school in 75 hours here in Georgia, and then you have to pass the state exam. And once you pass the state exam and the background checks and so on and so forth, you get the opportunity to hang your license with the broker. I've all, I'm also in position now once you, well, in Florida, you have to be licensed for two years in Georgia it's three years before you can become a real estate broker. So the difference between a realtor and a real estate broker is the fact that I can like you can actually open your own brokerage. Um, that's not what I'm foreseeing right now in the future for myself just yet because of the goals that I have. But um, I, I've actually taken the broker exam, passed the broker exam, so I can actually open my own real estate brokerage if I hang my license as a broker. You ever thought about that? I have thought about it too, but I like to move at the pace of grace and do what's in God, what's in God's right. will for me. So, like I said, right now because I'm doing both states and you know with my marketing and so on and so forth, it's not in in the forefront of my goals right now to go ahead and start my own program. But it's part of your marketing right now. We're gonna put your face out there for millions <laughs> of people to see right now. So uh, <laughs> that's that's for sure. You can you can you can bet on that. So the requirements to buy a home. What are the requirements to buy a home? But if that, let me say this too. Let me throw this out there really quick. If there are any agents, I do train. So I coach um, my my brokerage in Georgia. I um got I've got bought on as a business lunch coach. So I coach other agents too. Um, so if anybody wants to, you know, team up and pair up, I'm always looking for some great people to help out because I mean I do both states, as you know, um, and so on and so forth. In order to purchase a home. The requirements to purchase a home are almost the same right now as it is to uh, rent. They're going to want your um, last 30 days of your paycheck stubs. They want the last two years of your bank, um, your um, W-2s or your tax returns. They want the last 60 days, last two months of your bank statements. If you have a failed 401k or um, any type of investment accounts, they want a copy of those as well. And they just kind of pretty much want to monitor and see what's in the account, even if you don't necessarily use those funds. But having some funds in the account actually uh, heightens uh, your ability to get qualified. But honestly, like you can get qualified with the low. I got one lender that goes as, as low as a 500 
some of my one of my lenders go as low as a 580. Me personally, I never encourage nobody to go that low because a lot of times their bank require you to have reserves in the bank. But if you're like cash rich and you just not in a position right now, I say it's great for somebody who actually wants to become a homeowner because even if you purchase at that 500 or that 580, you have the opportunity to refinance within six months. So it gets you into the home or whatever if you have the funds to do it. If you don't have the funds, I always encourage my clients to be at least to at a 640 to a 680 because within those ranges, you qualify for all the down payment assistance and the free money and you know, the 100% finance and that's available to um, home buyers um, out here right now. Okay. So the last, um, so to sum it up, in order to purchase a home, um, at least a minimum credit score of a 500, but if you're looking to use down payment or need any assistance, I say roughly a 640. Um, last two months of your bank statements, last 30 days of your paycheck stubs, uh, last two years of your W-2s or your tax returns. And also, we I have lenders who have the entrepreneur loan, which if you haven't filed taxes, if you don't have your W-2s, they can actually use the last 12 months of your bank or your bank statements, and they qualify you from that. So if you got $10,000 going into your account for the last 12 months, nine times out of 10, your average um, monthly income is going to be 10000 and that's what they qualify you for as long as they see it going in the bank consecutively. Okay. All right, that's pretty... That's pretty straightforward right there. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, how can a future home buyer get assistance with a down payment to buy a home? It's a two part question. And are there any down payment programs that you can recommend? Um, the way that um, a homeowner can actually, um, how can a future homeowner get assistance with a down payment program? Well, I can say, call me and I'll help you out. <laughs> Um, but like I just stated, um, on the real, um, at least have a minimum of a 640, um, I say six, uh, 640 credit score, like at a 640, 680, I have some of my lenders, my preferred lenders that has a hundred percent conventional product where the, it's a hundred percent financing. Um, they don't have no down payment and they don't have to cover the mortgage insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one of my lenders have 100% FHA financing where they give you the money to actually move in um, on the FHA side is actually, you know, really, really good, too, because if you get a down payment or 100% financing and say if you were to purchase a resale home, which is a home that somebody is actually reselling. You can actually move into that home with little to no money because if you're getting a hundred percent finance and then say the seller will contribute ten thousand or however many dollars we can get towards closing costs, you can almost move in without even spending any of your money, you know, whatever. So it's so much creative financing out of here. So and again, to get down payment assistance, just be in position, have the um right score. You know what I'm saying? Just in that 620, 640, it just depends on which program you're getting qualified for. And I'm quite sure you always consider also recommend too, like a lot of the local governments offer assistance, down payment assistance, like here in Florida, I know Broward County and a lot of other counties, uh, a lot of the cities offer down payments, or if you do get the house, they uh, will like put new windows, new doors, uh, renovations, they will, they will like put windows, doors, roofs, uh, they give you assistance on that too. I'm so happy you brought that up when it comes to these city programs and so on and so forth, because I have someone in Florida right now that I'm I actually happen and I have a board meeting with the city on in May on her behalf, because a lot of these city programs, they give you a lump sum of money and they give you so much money, but a lot of people don't actually understand the terms. I'm sitting here at my desk right now where I printed out, as you guys can see, a big packet of stuff that I'm going over. I have someone that actually purchased a um, program in the city and the um, CRA gave her money to purchase this home. The CRA gave her 50,000, the city gave her 16,500. She was fresh out of high school or whatever, and she accepted the money. Here it is 15 years later, she's ready to sell the house. And now the terms are the CRA wants their 50,000 back, the city wants their $50,000 back, plus in the terms, they want 50% of her equity. And if the person that we sell the home to doesn't qualify for the city's program, they want an extra 4% interest on top of that. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. So you have to be extra careful with these city programs because the city trying the cities are trying to keep affordable housing within the community where they're giving you this money, but the terms are for 30 years. Oh. And statistics doesn't even show that your first time home buyer lives in a home for 30 years. It used you to know, be five whatever. years. It yeah. used to be five years. Five. And now I think they moved it up to 15, 15. here in Deerfield Beach. And it's forgivable after. It's like a lien right. and it's forgivable right. after the five, 10 or 15 years. But those terms, what you just said, coming from CRA money and city money, this is my first time ever hearing that. But I'm glad that you did. That was good information because I definitely can tell people in the future to definitely beware of, of terms right. like that. To the point where I think the city knows that the program was horrible because as I was speaking with the director, I said these terms were never set up for this buyer to win. You know, like here it is. She's put marble floors into the home, crown molding all in the home. And it's like, you guys want 50% of her equity. I can understand getting your money back, but to also put in the terms 50% of the equity. So it's like right now I'm under, we're on the contract for this particular home with a cash buyer and we can't even sell it because we have to now go through all of these terms. So when you are, if I can encourage anybody in our community and stuff before you sign anything, make sure you understand the terms because as you stated there are a lot of programs out here where the money is for, is is a is, a, is, a, is either a grant it's forgivable after five years it's forgivable after 10 years but signing anything that's forgivable at 30 years is like a disservice to to the bar it is you know, it is and I, I never heard of that. This is my first time ever hearing of that. That's why I say I'm glad I never heard of that before, but I'm so glad that you mentioned that and brought that up because that's very important for anyone to know. I know here in Deerfield, where we are located at, I know back in the past, because when I first attempted to buy a house, uh, I went through that first time home buyers. I went through all of that, but at the time they couldn't really help me do anything. And it was a, it was a brother at the time. His name was Rodney Smith. He tried to sabotage me from day one because I was a single black man. And he was like asking me all kinds of questions. Uh, why I'm not married. And I mean, it was like, which is I had never heard before. And, and, and this is the truth. There are no people who I recommended. I had already been pre-qualified through the city and the county. People that came after me that I told about the program because for some reason he didn't like my best friend turned me on to the program and because he didn't like, I guess, how my best friend had talked. He put me at the back. He took my paperwork and put me at the back. And the people who I told a house, told about the program to Wanda, they all got houses before me. But, you know, in the end, I went to my commissioner at that time and that was 30 years ago. And I got the guy fired and I don't take no pleasure in that. But I did not like what he did because I felt like he sabotaged my dreams of owning a brand new home. So... You know, those first time home time briars, uh, they can be they can be a, a gift and a curse at times. Well, I can tell you, um, that's one thing I love um, just being in this position because it allows me the opportunity to not only sell homes um, and create a lifestyle, you know, that I um, want to live for me and my children. But it allows me the opportunity to educate my community because a lot of the things that I know now. I didn't know growing up and it wasn't talked about in our communities. Like a lot of people say a first time home buyer, but the thing about it is first time home buyer, most people know that loan as the FHA loan. But right now they have a conventional product, Fannie Mae um, Home Ready Home Possible, where you can actually get a conventional loan and put down less money than you would with the first time home buyer loan, which is everybody knows, which is FHA. So it's all about education. Um, it's okay. all about educating the community. And a lot of people think first time home buyers, you're considered to be a first time home buyer every three years. So if you've already even purchased the home, lost the home, foreclosed on the home, you can still, if it's been um, um 
past three years, you can still get any any of the same funding that somebody who's doing it for the very first time can actually get. You can actually own a home in Florida and be considered a, a, a and still use the FHA loan long in here in Georgia, as long as it's within a two hundred two hundred mile radius between your the um, primary property and the investment property that you're purchasing. So it's, honestly, it's all about education because when people say first time home buyer, like they think, oh, I got to take a class, I got to do this. Actually, you don't have to do any of that. Matter, I just pre-approved somebody that been with NACA for two years. And she just came to me and I got her pre-approved right away. She's home shopping in Florida right now. So it's all about education, honestly. Yes, yes. And that's, you've been very edu educational so far. You taught me a lot on here so far. So. You go ahead with your question. Okay, Tawanda, uh, this question And I can here, say uh, to you too, because um, one thing you said that they shattered your dreams of becoming a homeowner. Sometimes God uses us as a vessel to help somebody else. So even though they did it before you, it doesn't mean that it wasn't for, you know, it wasn't, it wouldn't be your time or whatever. So sometimes God uses us as the vehicle to help other people. So maybe that was what was happening in your situation. That you, they better, you better preach. You. And you know, <laughs> when that happened, it's like where I'm at right now, I'm more than happy. I don't think I would have been happy in the location where they were originally going to put me at, but I'm happy. I'm more than happy and blessed and grateful right where I'm at right now. You know, it's actually me and my brother live right across the street from each other. So uh, I purchased my house on, and I moved in October. He moved in November. So it was a blessing because I was able to, the guy was out there working on the house and he came, walked over and asked me, you know, about, and I told him, yeah, I got my own brother. So it's a blessing. We, we, yeah. we here right now. So it all worked out. God, God's plan came in and worked out perfect. And it happened just like that. I was just actually helping him move into his house right here. Yep. And I looked across the street. I was like, they selling that house? And he was like, yeah. So I went over there and I said, hey, you selling the house? And he said, yeah. And he gave me, he wrote the lady's name. Her name was Mary Wells. I never forget it. And he, he wrote her name down and I called her and she said, when would you like to look at the house? I said, tomorrow. Looked at it. 30 days later, I was yeah. closing in the house, you know, just like that. God's perfect. And I didn't have the perfect uh, uh, sc uh, score. My my score was like maybe around at the time, maybe 620. Mm. You know? Lot, you don't have to have a perfect score. A lot of people don't know that. Like, you don't have to have a perfect score. When I got my pre approval letter, I had a volunteer repossession still on my credit. Like, it doesn't have to be a perfect score. You can have, like, even, like, a lot of people uh, have medical bills on their credit report. Medical bills are not factored when you're getting ready to, um, when they're qualifying you for a home. They can work They can work against your DTI, but they don't stop you. Um, a lot of people, uh, guys ask me, hey, I have drug charges or I'm a felon. None of that prevents you from becoming a homeowner. What about child support? Child support can very well hold it up if it's on your credit report. So all they really need to do is be paying on the child support. It won't stop you. A lot of people stop themselves just by avoiding paying their bills. But um, you can have child support. You can have student loan debt. The guidelines have actually changed for student loan debt. I closed one of my clients. She had over 200K in student loan debt. Again, it's all about information and knowledge and definitely who you work with. Um, and so on and so forth. So all of those plays a play a major factor. You don't have to have perfect credit. That's, that's good knowledge there. Yes, it is. Good knowledge. Okay, Tawanda, uh, my question to you is, what do, what do you do if clients have unreasonable high expectations about how much they can sell their home for? Well, honestly, I, I don't have those types of clients when they have unrealistic um, expectations. I'm the expert and I always... I, I always exercise that. Uh, when I do sit down with someone, I always ask them, hey, do you know how much your home is worth? What are you looking to profit from this? And so on and so forth. When they kind of share with me, hey, I've looked on Zillow and it says this and much and I'm looking to walk away with X amount of dollars. It it helps set my expectations in place. I can either over deliver or under deliver that. And if the expect expectations are too high where I can't deliver, I would gladly walk away because I, I don't like create intention or anything. Like I'm not going to promise you that I can do something that I know I just cannot do. I've done that before. I had somebody where I've actually paid for an appraiser and appraiser came back at 450, but they wanted me to list the house at 600,000 when it was a seller's market. 
And the thing about it is just everybody wasn't getting that certain locations, certain homes, just because your neighbor got a hundred K over asking price doesn't warrant the fact that you're going to get that. So if somebody's expectations are higher than what I can actually deliver, I will, I would gladly walk away because that's not the client for me. Um, and so on and so forth. The clients that I deal with, I only like to work with positive energy. They trust me as their expert. I'm going to come with statistics. I run CMAs. I run my CMAs, my comparables at least three to four, five times. So I'm very solid on that. And if it's something that I, the margins may be a little bit too, too wide, I would actually call in and pay for an appraiser myself just to make sure that my clients are getting, maximizing all of their equity, getting top dollar for their home and so on and so forth. So um, it just depends if the person, if the expectations are too high, I, 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 I will ask them to please find somebody else because I cannot deliver. And that's the best thing to do. You yeah. know, you Great information. If you can't, yeah. if you can't deliver, yeah, like you say, you know, yeah. you just bow out of it, you know, and say, right. hey, you know, I can't. If 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 it's you know four fifty and you know you know it's going for four fifty, you want me to listen to six hundred thousand? I I don't think I can I can do that. So. And just gracefully back out of it, you know? Or let's meet halfway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's go to five. Let's try five. Let's try you know, 500. That's more realistic, that, you know? See if that works, you know? But yeah, you know, you, you, are, you are on the money what you're saying about that, you know? It might need to oh, yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah. Absolutely. And if and if it is, if the margins are kind of close on what they're expecting or somebody say, hey, such and such, such, I will put something in place. Okay, well, I will go ahead and let, if it's not too crazy, because again, I am the expert and I'm going to run my numbers. If it's within not too far, maybe 20, anywhere from 20 to 50,000, I'll be like, okay, well, I will list it. But according to the numbers that I run, I feel like this is where we we can actually list, list comfortably and get it to move. Um, so I'll go ahead and list it at this price because this is what you're requesting. If if you're willing to sign that, if it doesn't move within seven to 10 days, we're able to do a price reduction. Great so, idea. You know, great idea. It's like, you know, right now we know that rent is through the roof right now, everywhere. I mean, here in Florida, everywhere you go right now, people are charging out the yin yang for, for, for rent. And you have people that that's get it come you know coming graduating from college and may want to be a first time home buyer. How how can a college student buy a home with just their college transcripts? And I know we had talked about that, but educate the people on that. I mean, you told me, but I mean, it wowed me when you told me. But tell the people how can a college student buy a home with just their college transcript? Y'all need to hear this. Well, yeah, actually, um, it's a lot easier, as I told you on that conversation that we had. I And I know for a fact that it is because I, the first college student that I actually closed was my little sister who graduated from the University of, um, from UCF uh, College up in Orlando. And um, again, me personally, I only work with lenders who work like myself. Like I know I grew up in Pahokee and my community I grew up in. So it's all about education and learning to me. So I always vet the people that my vendors are vetted. If they can't answer their phone after five o'clock or if they can't answer their phone on the weekend, we cannot work together because all of my clients, I've been on the phone at midnight with truck drivers that's on the road, you know? So I'm pretty much, I cater to my client. Even Now, I don't do that for everybody. Let me throw that disclaimer out there. But if it's time right. to where I need to, or somebody will hit me up if I'm up two, three in the morning and they be like, uh, send me a messenger. I'll be like, okay, call me. Because I'm up at the, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I work for the people. I'm a people person. So I just love what I do. So I don't have a problem. Um, but that's how my lenders are. They're vetted. So they these these people are educating themselves constantly and so on and so forth. Um, and one of my lenders, um, that I started working with actually, when I first became licensed, I, I'm always wanting to know stuff. So I ask, I'm going to ask questions and I need you to break it down because the more I learn, the more, the easier it is for me to actually convey this information over to my clients as well. So in order for a, a college student to, uh, purchase a home, they only need their transcripts and an offer letter. So the transcripts, um, when you you buy a home, traditionally, they ask for your last two years of your W-2s or your tax returns. Mm -hmm. 
In a college student situation, they're asked for the last two years of your transcript. So you have to at least have a minimum of an associate's degree, a two-year degree, because they're going to ask for the last two years. And say like someone went to college, for instance, for nursing. And once they finished with the program, they got hired as an RN. So they went to ABC Hospital. ABC Hospital says, hey, um, we're going to go, we're offering Daryl a position here making $100,000 a year, working 40 hours a week, X, Y, and Z. They use that offer letter to actually qualify you for the home. Wow. Um, in order to close on the home, you actually have to at least get a one or two checks from that company, depending on which bank qualifies you, because they want to make sure like, okay, you are working this job to, um, and so on and so forth. And that's actually all you pretty much need. They qualify you from what they say you're going to make, as opposed to with the, with the, with the traditional way you have to be on your job, on, on a job, because it's not one particular job. You need to be on a job for at least two years. Wow. So college students, if you're out there watching right now, all you need is two years of your college transcripts, which equals out to a associate's degree and and, and get at least two checks um, from, from, from that years. from that job, you know, that, you know, that that in order to close. So they right, can actually go into close. contract with that before they actually get a paycheck. So they can actually find a home and go into contract. In order to actually close on the home, they actually need to start um, generating income from the um, from that position. Wow, see, wow. this is this is good information. Good information. Real good information that people don't know. And, and not every realtor will share this information with you, you know? And that's what I know about you. You know, I, I when, we, when we were talking, man, I, she was telling me some things. I'm like, wow, Tawanda, I didn't even know this, you know. And I'm like, we, we definitely got to, you know, inform the public about this, you know, educate the public about this. Because that's what we do here. And um, that's that's your profession. So uh, you heard it right there. I mean, two years, uh, you know, your your college transcripts for two years, man. Wow, that's that's. That's like, man, I never knew that. And then that's some real, real good information. Uh, even parents, like even for the parents, a lot of parents have college students, even the parents, it's a great way for the parents to go in, um, in as a first time home buyer as well. Cause even if the student didn't, I mean, your student, your child is in position. Of course, we always want our children to push them into a better position, but say like, Hey, even if the college student was to go in and get the property for the the parent, they can, you can always get refied off that six months later. So it's so many different, it's a way to actually jumpstart just a family period. Oh, wow. You have, you got another Yes, one uh, Tawanda, uh, I, my question, second question is, and my final question is, as a realtor, do you prefer to work with clients by yourself or get support from other people at an agency? What do you mean at an agency? Or, or just, do you prefer to just work with, you know, work with clients by yourself or just have someone else helping you? It don't have to be from an agency. Or do you just rather work by yourself or, or just have some assistance from someone else, maybe? Absolutely. I would always love to work with other people. Teamwork makes the dream yeah. work. Like I can't do everything by myself. I'm well-versed in real estate. My loan officer is well-versed in mortgages, which has helped me actually get well-versed in mortgages. I have a home inspector. I, I actually have about three, four lenders that I work with. Each one of my lenders has different programs. So once I speak to my clients, that's how I pair my clients up with lenders because everybody's situation is going to be unique and different. So absolutely, no great duns, no great things are done alone. You have to have a team. Like you have to be a team player. So absolutely, uh, my team is actually what helps me uh, execute uh, these other people's visions for them. It's my okay. team. Okay. So you have a home inspector. You have you have all of that. You you got it. You got it all down back. You need your you need to you definitely need to go to that next level when God talk to you and let you know you. Yeah. You sound, you're one of the most qualified, uh, uh, knowledgeable realtors that I ever spoken with, you know, so. I thank you for that. I, I mean, if you again, like I said, I, I'm moving at the pace of grace. Um, outside of real estate, I'm I'm a mom of four. I have four children. Actually, I just became a grandmother. My daughter, she just Yeah, I saw that beautiful, beautiful grandbaby of yours. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter just had her first baby. So again, like I don't like to move. Like I said, real estate is my ministry. Like this, this is just natural happen for me. So to see like, oh, let me open my own office. Let me do this. It's, 
I never really think beyond that point or whatever, because I mean, I'm great. I'm, I'm, my license are hung with two great brokerages. I'm with Keller Williams in Georgia. My license is with LPT in Florida. You guys look out. I have a billboard going up really soon in Florida. All right. Let us know. So, I mean. And I got another question, too. This was one that's been kind of, I don't know. Like, since COVID, were you showing, were you able to show how just, or what technology do you have? I know we have computers and all, but were you able to use virtual technology to show houses when the COVID epidemic was at its height? Yeah, but again, um, you can, we have um, digital and, you know, virtual tours and stuff, but nothing is the same as going in a home and actually feeling that home for That's yourself. That's true. Walk so through. like you got to feel and be able to picture where your things can go at and like, hey, I, I can see myself here living here or hey, I, I kind of like this neighborhood. So even when COVID was here, I was just masked up, make sure my clients were masked up. I kept a kit inside of my car and I actually still show homes because I don't I mean, some people can do it. But my average buyers, the, the clientele and my audience, they actually want to go and actually see mm -hmm. these homes because as a realtor, I can tell you a lot of times these pictures be really, really, really nice and taking a high definition. And when you get there, you be like, wait, hold on. <laughs> really? yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I've seen some pictures like that when I was shopping for my second home and I was like, what? You know, I, I got there. I was like, this doesn't look nothing like the pictures I saw online. You know, it was like night and day. I can tell you that much. And when I bought my home, I'll tell you, I, I came and I parked in the yard at night and I just sat there and I sat there in the yard for like maybe and I 45 minutes sometime to an hour just parked there and I wanted to see how the neighborhood I wanted to see the lighting the people and I felt comfortable when I left there that night and I randomly came other nights Saturday nights and I would just come there and park before and I told the you know I told the uh guy that was selling the house I told him he said yeah come and I felt so comfortable. So when I bought my house, when I bought my house, I was 150% sure that's where God wanted me to be at. That's how comfortable I felt. And we were young. I, I think I was, what, 26 years old when I bought my my, my house? I was 26. Making $11 and like 10 cents an hour right at that time. And I bought my home for 59.9. You can't get a home for 59.9 no. these days. No. Nowhere near that. that. Those days are gone forever. You know. <laughs> At least in my that. in my opinion. You know. I mean, I tell people all the time, like people, like you can't find it. What God has for you, it is for you. Like if it's up, you might find a home 59.9 where somebody is actually about to lose it in foreclosure and. In order to not to get that foreclosure on their credit, they're they'll willingly just let you assume that loan mm -hmm. for the remainder. So it's ways where you still can actually purchase right. a home. So I would say don't count it out because well, what God has for you yeah. I, I, actually I, I, is for you. Right? And you're right. You 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 put that so eloquently uh, there. You're right. What God has for you is for you. So it, it's possible that you can get a home. For fifty nine nine, yeah, it's it's you have it's to be in the right place at the right time, but it's 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 out there. It's 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 some it's a house out there somewhere like that. Somebody wants to sell in the future uh, or, or in the past. Uh, it's it's something out there, definitely. But that, but that what I just said is actually another great way to become a homeowner as well. Like you have like in this market and like you said, a lot of people have refire rent is so high and stuff like that. You can assume someone else's loan. Um, for them so like whatever their mortgage is whatever the payments you just assuming that loan and you just taking over the payments and that's another way that you can actually become a homeowner so that's why I say it's so many different ways in real estate that you know so many avenues that you can actually go down um, more questions here we got we got for people who don't have the best credit you know their credit they may be on the 500 or in the fours or whatever um how can a future home buyer get assistance? Oh, that's not the question. What programs are available to help future home buyers repair their credit? If they want to help, you know, get their credit up to par so they can buy a home, what programs that you know of, you know, are out there? I'm quite sure Tawanda do it. <laughs> she do everything. Well <laughs> wait, wait. Um, that's just like saying, give it a mic and he'll eat it. Um 
there's different. Okay. So there's a lot of different credit repair programs out here. I encourage everybody to actually just learn because the money that you spend with um, some people, you can actually literally just send a certain letter, like a HIPAA letter or a 609, a certain letter. And a lot of this stuff will come off your credit. You can actually call the credit bureaus and and have inquiries removed off your credit report, but hey, I didn't authorize these inquiries. So I encourage everybody, if your credit score isn't the best, to do, do some research because there's a lot of groups on Facebook. There's like for myself, even the clients that I, I work with, I bought a lot of books and material to help them actually fix their own credit. Um, I've had a lot of credit repair companies reach out and be like, hey, you can make money doing this or whatever, but I just don't believe in making my, my clients waste money because at the end of the day, some of these credit repair companies, you're spending X, you're spending X amount of dollars a month, but you still have to mail in your own letters and so on and so forth. So I encourage everybody like look up credit repair groups on Facebook. And like you said, if they're a client of mine, I actually give it to them for free. Like, hey, here's the letter because I've, I've paid for all of that stuff and I've fixed my own. So I know it's not hard or easy. Like I even did it for my kids. My son graduated with a 740 at 18 um, from high school. You know what I'm saying? So you can add your kids as authorized users. So it's so much knowledge out here. And at my seminars as well, I share these different things. Now, you have some people who just don't have the time to do it themselves. I have a credit repair agent that's on my team, but they don't do anything monthly. It's like a one-time fee that you pay them and they clean it until that they know that because they know how I work and they're cleaning it so that you can actually purchase a home. Because sometimes when you're actually purchasing a home, credit repair can actually hurt you depending on what agent you utilize because a lot of them just go in and dispute everything. Like they just hit you. And, it, and it'll mess you up. So when you're actually getting ready to purchase a home, it's very imperative that you work with the, a credit repair person that knows that you're actually trying to purchase a home. And, and it's ironic you said that with your son, with my daughter. Uh, when she came out of high school, I had gave her a credit card, an authorized user. So when she came out, she was already prepared to, if she wanted to get a house at that time, which she didn't, but when she came out, she was already prepared to go get a car or a house or whatever. Uh, and that was, I learned that very early on uh, with that, with using that card. It can become a, a, a gift and a curse, but it's, you gotta have someone, you gotta have someone that's very responsible. But here's the thing, Buzzword. actually you, you should be the responsible one because when it comes to a kid, um, to, you can add some cards allow you to add them as young as 12 and 13 years old. I'm not giving no child my credit card. <laughs> Me either. You keep the card. Even like with even like with outside people, I've added one of my friends to one of my cards before. She didn't have the card. I had the card, but she was reaping the benefits. So that's a good thing and a great way that I've actually learned here in Atlanta that a lot of people do like. I, when I first moved, one of my friends, she was like, I know you want, you're looking to buy a house. She was like, I got a credit card with like 20,000 on it. I'm going to add you as an authorized user. Like that was different for me seeing it in Atlanta because in at home, oh, they not doing that for no, you. No, no, you know no, no. <laughs> listen, you can't get nobody barely to sign just for you to walk out the store with a soda water. So let alone somebody <laughs> add you to their credit card yeah. or whatever. But it's actually a great way to help somebody because you don't have to give them the card so right. i encourage everybody to like to get into some of these different credit repair groups if anybody's looking to purchase a home they can actually reach out to me i have different templates that i don't mind sharing with anybody for free because i mean a lot of the stuff i know now i learned from somebody else or it was given to me free i paid for a lot of it but i don't mind about paying it for it by sharing it with them so if anybody's in that position i'll be more than happy to help and that's why I wanted to bring you on because when you told me this stuff, man, I was like, you know, you got to get on here and tell these people about this, you know, and, you know, you, you know, just to get out there and help people, you know, that really need help. A lot of people out there want to buy houses, I mean, homes, they really need help and they just uneducated and, you know, they need to run into people like you, that, you know, that will don't mind sharing that your knowledge with them, you know, and. And that's always a good thing, you know, because people are so quick to try and get over on you these days. And, uh, you know, they need someone who they a realtor who they can trust. I know I, I know I, I, I when I bought my home. I wanted someone that I could trust, 
you know, especially with my personal information and my social and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah man. It's, you know. Okay, let me throw this disclaimer out there. As a realtor, um, again, that's why I tell you guys we work with a team. Real, No realtor should be getting anyone's personal information. Your information should be going directly to the lender. Yeah. Like, as a realtor, I show homes and I sell homes. Like I'm always in movement, so I don't get anyone's personal information because I, I have to ride around with it all day. If someone broke in my car, right. they can see information. So Tenny, as a, if you are in a, um, purchasing a home, you shouldn't be giving your information to the realtor. You should be sending that directly to the loan officer because they have like a secure portal where all of your stuff can go at. You don't have to worry about nobody hacking. And, you know, once you close on that home, you know, um, identity theft or anything. So just wanted to throw that out there. No realtor should be doing it. Um, send it directly to the lender so you don't have to worry about that. And, and times have changed. You got portals now? I didn't know that. I'm learning something. <laughs> See, again, I'm going back almost 30 years ago when I, when, when I purchased my home and it was all hand delivered. I mean, fax machine back then, but now you got portals. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got yeah, everything wait. right there for you now. And, and with the portal, you can directly upload right. everything straight and it goes directly to the to the lender um themselves. So yeah, right. you, you don't have to um get and you're right. I do remember using that portal. You are absolutely right. I do remember using that portal uh to upload my documents. You are you are absolutely right. That's why I say times <clears throat> have changed. Yeah. Okay, the, the final question that I have for you is H E L O C HELOC. What is the acronym for HELOC? Could you explain that to the viewers? Yes. So I'm going to put this disclaimer out there before I explain this to the viewers. I am a licensed realtor, a licensed real estate agent. I do know a lot about the mortgage side, so I will share my knowledge um, from the mortgage side and my, my knowledge on the HELOC, but I am a realtor. <laughs> So HELOC stands for Home Equity Line of Credit. Um, home Equity Line of Credit with the HELOC, you can actually utilize it like a line of credit. So you have HELOC and you have HELOAN and you have refinancing. So I'll explain the difference between the three. On a refinance, you're going to refinance, say like if you have right now, um, say like your home is worth $100,000 or whatever, and you want to refinance it um, to pull some money out of it. You refinance it to pull $50,000 out of it. When you refinance, if the mortgage rates today are 7%, when you refi, you're going to refi into that 7% rate or whatever. Say you have um or whatever. When it comes to a HELOC, say you got $100,000 worth of equity in your home with a HELOC, you can actually pull $50,000 out, but only that $50,000 would have the new rate. So say like if you have $100,000 worth of equity and your home is overall $300,000, you have, say that your current interest rate may be 4%, but you want to pull $50,000 out. Today's rates are at 7%. You will continue to keep the 4% rate on the remainder amount of that home, but the, the new 7% will only go on that five uh, that $50,000 that you pulled out. So you still have your same low rate, you just, the new rate will only apply to the, the amount grand. that you pulled out. Okay. Exactly. And then you will be able to utilize that 50 grand over and over like a credit card or whatever. Then you also have a he loan. So it's a home equity loan, which is more so like you can pull that $50,000 out um, with the he loan, but that he, you will pay, it'll be fit like a structured loan. So say you pull 50000 out and, hey, you're paying $100, $100 a month back for the next 30 years. But with a HELOC, with the um, line of credit, you're using it like you're utilizing it over and over like a credit card. Right, right, right. Did I explain that? Yeah, that? Yes, yes, you, you did. did. <laughs> yes. Very, very clearly, too. So, uh, I mean, even I, I caught that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so in today's market, I would encourage anybody to do a, especially if they have a really low interest rate, to do a HELOC over a refinance right. or mm -hmm. HELOC over a refi. Because you're only uh, the, the new rate only applies to what you're taking out. Okay, and it's just a one a question that just popped up into my head. Like I I know some people, and we know uh, a lady that just passed away. Um, one of my mother's our mother's friends, and 
uh, we understand that there was a reversible, reverse, reversible mortgage. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why people get these reverse mortgages and uh, the rates just go up and, and they just, I mean, the people can't afford them in your own, with your, with your own personal experience. I don't know if you ever had any, maybe you have, maybe you had, haven't, but with the reversible mortgage, is it a good mortgage? Is it, is it something good to get? Or, I mean, give, give me your own personal opinion, professional opinion, I would say on a reversible mortgage. Is it a good thing or is it not? So it's so funny that you asked me this question because I kid you not, yesterday evening, me and one of my lenders just had this conversation because I came across a client who has a reversible mortgage on their home. And this is one of the questions that I actually just asked her yesterday. Um, My opinion on a reversible mortgage, it depends on, for one, it depends on the circumstances. Every situation is going to be totally different. With a reversible mortgage, if it's an elder and they really don't have any heirs like that or no help, I say a reversible mortgage is great because they're not paying anything. They give them the money up front. They don't have a um, monthly and they're able to live the remainder of their life, you know, great or whatever. Um, On the flip side of that, say they do have a, a... heirs or a family, um, a reversible mortgage can still be very well good because just whatever amount that they got back, you would just have to pay that back and you still can keep the home and the family um, or whatever. So it just depends on the terms overall. It depends on the situation. Um, There's a lot of things that factors in that. So in my professional opinion, I can say it can, it depends. Again, it can be good and it can be bad. In some instances, it can be bad because like in some families, people sneak and do it, you know, or whatever, just so that when when the heir passes away, like they don't have to fight and siblings don't have to fight about it. But a lot of times they can sell themselves short because a lot of times what they're selling it, giving it for or the money that they're getting, they have a lot more equity in it than what they're selling it for. So again, it just depends on the overall situation that the person is in, why why do they want to do a um reverse mortgage? Like what what even brought up the idea? So everybody's situation is going to be different. So it can be good and it can be bad, just like rent to own. Rent to own is good for some people, but overall, in my professional opinion, I would never encourage it. You know, because the the at the end of the day, you still have to qualify for the loan to even own it from the rental. You see what I'm saying? So if I can help you do that up front, then, you know, you go in as a homeowner, as opposed to like with rent to own, you renting that home out, you have up to three years and say if life happens um, where you can't qualify for the mortgage after the three years, it was pretty much just a waste of your money that you've given to this company. So with anything, it just depends on the situation. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing and I wouldn't say um, it's great. I say it, whatever works for that, the client's current situation is what I, um, encourage them to do because they're responsible overall. Well, I'm definitely going, I, I'm definitely going to leave this interview more knowledgeable than what I yes, no started doubt. with. I mean, you provided us with some top notch knowledge, man. I mean, this is some, uh, I'm like, wow, I didn't even know this stuff here. Um, uh, do, do you have any more questions? What to, no, to I, I, I mean, she answered well beyond my yeah, scope of yeah, absolutely. anything. And that's why we wanted to bring you on. So sh- shout out your, your, your Instagram, shout out your Facebook, your social media, shout it out. So let everybody know who you are on, on the book and on the gram. And she'll sell your house anywhere in Georgia, Florida. She'll come to you wherever. Shout, shout out, shout out your um, social I, media. I will. Um, before before I shout that out, I do want to um say this really quick because we were just talking about the um HELOCs. When you are looking to do a HELOC refinance or a HE loan, um the the application process is actually going to be the same because I had somebody who um actually acquired a property from her dad. Her dad bought the um condo for thirty thousand, and now it's worth one hundred and twenty. But you still, it's still like a mortgage application process where you still need to give your tax returns and so on and so forth to even be able to have to do that, even though you may own a property free and clear. And then another thing, um, just to give them a little bit of the terms, say like your home has 100%, I'm just going to use 100000 because it's easy, $100,000 worth of equity. When you're doing a HELOC or anything, you can only borrow up to 80% of the equity. So you can only get up to 80000 
or the max debt to income. So if your max DTI is only 50, you can only get up to 50. So that's another thing that I want people to keep in mind. But right now, so many people have so much um, equity in their home where if you do have the ability to go ahead and get some of it with the way the world is going right now, it definitely say sit some of that um, some of that liquid into your own account because um, you never know what's going to happen and so on and so forth. But again, I thank you guys so much for thank having you. me. Um, oh, thank thank it's you. Been a pleasure. Um, my name is Tawanda Hanks on Facebook. You can look me up under Tawanda Hanks. And that's T-A-W-A-N-D-A-H-A-N-K-S. On Instagram, my name is Real Lentless Realtor. It's R-E-A-L Lentless Realtor. Um, on Instagram, TikTok, I'm Tawanda Hanks. On most of every platform, I'm Tawanda Hanks. I am dual licensed. Um, my presence, I will be making a lot a bigger presence in Florida because I do see a need. I I see a lot of uh, lack of information and misinformation floating around. So I will be out a lot more. If anybody have any questions, I can be reached at 404-988-9798, 404-988-9798. That is my cell phone number. The best way to text, um, to reach, um, to contact me, you can text me or call my phone even if you're not purchasing a home for me, if you just have any questions or need any guidance and so on and so forth, I would rather you get the right information as opposed to like, you know, falling into the hands of the wrong realtor. So even if you, I can't sell every house, but I, I, I'll I do my duty. I'll do my best to help anybody that I possibly can. So whether you whether you're going to purchase the home for me or not, I'll be I would rather you learn the information. So feel free to always reach out, call me. Um, I do home buying seminars. I have a, actually, and it was funny, Daryl, I have a church that um, actually reached out to me after that conversation that you and I had. So, oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> I'm meeting with this pastor tomorrow. Um, and like I said, I do both states. A lot of people don't know because they say they feel like I live in Georgia, that I don't sell Florida, but I actually sell more homes in Florida. I just don't post it as much. <laughs> And I am going to start posting it um, more because I see that we um, there is a need in Florida because um, and so on and so forth. But yeah, I appreciate you guys for having me. It was fun. And, yeah. and call Tawanda yeah. at a reasonable time. Not no yeah. two and three o'clock <laughs> in the morning either. And we call her two or three o'clock in the morning. She's trying to rest. Exactly. And what, again, when is your next seminar that you're going to have? I know you spoke about it. When is your next seminar? Is it going to be in Georgia or Florida? So I'm actually, my next seminar is going to be in May. Um, it's going to be virtual because I gotten so much um, requests and people asking. My next seminar is actually going to be uh, May, uh, I think I think we said it for May 6th, I want to say. No, I'm not. I will, I will confirm that. Send it I'm to on, us. Send it to us and we'll put it up on our, on our page. But it's, if it's not, it, it's, I think it's, that's the weekend. I just definitely have to look at my, I don't have my planner in front of me, yeah. um, but I'm almost pretty sure. And in the month of May, um, I actually have a lot of great things that I'm doing, giving away, giving back to the community. Um, it's a big birthday for myself. So I, I have a lot that I'm doing in May. Actually, I'm personally giving back, um, helping home buyers with uh, closing cost assistance. So it's great. I actually purchased the home. I will be contributing back myself personally, um, money towards their closing costs. So that would be out there as well. And I'll share that seminar. This is what this is what we're talking about. This is what we're all about right here, helping people, man. And uh, we don't look for anything in return other than to see you prosper. secure that bag and prosper in that in that in this world in the real to uh, real estate world. Uh, but we want to thank you for taking the time out of, you know, selling homes and coming on here to educate us and, and, and tell educate us. Educate our listeners. Educate our viewers. Our viewers and, 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 you know, we just appreciate everything that you're doing. Next time you come back to South Florida, let me know ahead of time so we can, we can link up, you know, and catch up because I haven't seen you in six or seven years now. So uh, uh, this is the first time I've seen your face in six years. So. Mm -hmm. uh, by all means, let me know when you come back down here and, uh, you know, we can we can hook up and link up for lunch or something and talk about some business moves and everything, you know? Absolutely. So I, I actually be back in Florida and because um, I have the meeting. So I'll be actually the weekend um, of the home buying seminar. The home buying seminar actually is on a Sunday. So it's May 7th. I just um, checked it. 
Um, the seminar is May 7th. I have the meeting. So I'll be in Florida that week. So I'll be in there down in Florida for at least a week or two. I do Georgia and Florida. So I do a week in Florida, um, maybe three weeks in Georgia, two weeks in Florida, two weeks in Georgia every month. So um, you guys will definitely be seeing me a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. We've been talking to Miss Tawanda Hanks. I call a T every time we talk. Uh, we want to thank Tawanda for coming on here and sharing all her knowledge with our viewers. Uh, don't be a stranger anytime you want to come over here and talk. You know, you know, come on yeah. on here. We are here. We all you always have a platform to come on here and talk. And uh, when you start selling those multi-million dollar homes and everything, you know, and you know, you start having these big seminars with all these big stars and everything don't forget about us call the hook and call us you know call the brothers up you know we want to come hang out with you, you you know i promise you humble beginnings i would never forget honestly i don't even market or even try to sell multi-million dollar homes because my my help is in my communities and i know a lot of people in my community are not multi-million dollar buyers so you will see me a lot in my communities you don't see me trying to sell those homes i'm always trying to do what i can to my own personal my community so that's what's up i never that's forget about y'all oh okay that's what's up that's what we want to hear twanda hanks thank you for thank stopping you. by the adam brothers podcast and i uh, want you to enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, uh and keep on selling those homes and we'll see you soon absolutely thank you so much you have oh, a good take, one. take care